Let's turn to our next topic, which is a, another form of support for the Gaza people coming out of the grassroots around the world that has been very, very impressive. And that's the ez- effort to keep Gaza connected during these you know, very frequent communications blackouts imposed upon the people of Gaza. And we are very, very honored to be joined here for this conversation by Myrna El, <clears throat> excuse me, Myrna El Halab. Halbawi, a writer, a journalist, and the founder of Connecting Gaza. Myrna, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much. The honor is all mine. Well, we are really happy to have you here. Uh, I think people have probably seen you from the eSIMs that you have been helping to get out to people of Gaza, raising money. I mean, I guess my first question is, is what moved you to, to and others working with you to take this action initially uh, to try to find a way to keep people connected in Gaza? I was really frustrated on October 28th during the first blackout of the, the communication and internet access in Gaza. Um, I was trying to provide into the humanitarian aid organizations in Gaza through Starlink, uh, the company of Elon Musk. Uh, he posted on X that he will, can provide um, connection and internet access to them. Um, and I tried to connect with the Egyptian Red Crescent and to fill the request on behalf of the Palestinian Red Crescent to provide internet access. And it was all in vain. Um, all the attempts to internet failed, and I got surprised with an with a post uh, from um, Elon Musk talking with one of the generals in the occupation army, uh, telling him that he will not uh, pro- provide access to Gaza unless he gets the permission of U.S. and Hamas Hamil- and the um, U.S. and Israel. So I was really frustrated and I was keeping up all the updates on my social media account on Instagram with my followers. And one of my followers, she is Egyptian Lebanese and she's living abroad. She said, can we use ISIMS to provide internet to them? I was like, I used ISIMS during my last Euro trip, but I'm not sure if it can work there. Maybe can you send me like two ISIMS and I will just give it a try. And she sent the two isms right away, and I kept calling on on X to see and to find anyone in Gaza who has like a sweet, a weak or a slight connection. Uh, and I found two uh, journalists, Ahmed Madhoun and Hind Khudari, um, and I sent them the the isms, and they successfully installed the isms on their phones. And that was the moment when uh, uh, connecting Gaza was born. It's really incredible what's been able to happen. I mean, it, th- these are some of the few people that have been giving the world a view of anything that's been happening uh, inside of Gaza. And it's incredible that it's still working. I mean, these are people who've become household names. You mentioned Hind, uh, have become household names around the world in many ways. And I'm just curious, um, you know, at this point in time, it does seem like the, uh, it doesn't seem, the Israelis are obviously trying to limit uh, the outside world's view of what's happening inside Gaza. They seem to be hunting journalists. Uh, it's becoming increasingly frightening. And I'm just curious, the people you're in touch with, what are you hearing from them? I mean, it just it just seems to get more devastating uh, by the day. And Israel does seem to be going after those who have access to these sorts of things. Um, we connect thousands of people in Gaza every day, and we hear thousands of heartbreaking stories every day from people in Gaza. Uh, people, I, I, I was connecting a girl yesterday and um, I was assisting her step by step to activate her SIM. And once we're, we, we were done with the activation and it was successfully done, um, text, and I was ending the conversation, she texted me, can you stay online with me to talk with me about anything because there are bombings near me and all my family got killed and I am alone. And I feel very scared. And it broke me down, really. And I kept being online with her and I kept texting her until the bombings uh, ended and she was like safe to, to sleep and to uh, to start her journey to the displacement to Rafah next day. Uh, so every day we, we, we come across some heartbreaking stories like... One guy, who, a Palestinian who lives abroad, and he was trying to provide an ISM for his sister in Gaza. And we were trying to connect her through him. 
and the internet connection in uh, Gaza is very bad and very weak and it keeps disconnect every like two minutes. So it interrupts the whole process of activation in system. At one time when I was waiting for him to get back to me, he told me I no longer need the ISIM because my sister got killed. Her house got bombed um, minutes ago. These are the kind of stories we hear every day um, in connecting Gaza. Um, we hear heartwarming stories of people ca who can who can connect with their families after days and days of not being able to uh, hear their voices or uh, talk with their loved ones or even reach hospitals. Uh, we even connect with so many so who could um, their um, their videos and their um, and sharing the truth of what's happening on ground to the media platforms around the world. Um, but the heartbreaking stories we keep hearing and we keep coming across every day is, is definitely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I think that's connected to this that's important, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's maybe well established, you know, people have a right to water, a right to food, a right to housing, but I, I think the right to be able to stay connected, to use the internet, to be online, I mean, how important is that when we're also talking about the things that people in Gaza are being denied? I cannot believe that we're almost in 2024 and we are not acknowledging the communication and internet access as a basic human right, just like food, medicine, and clothing. So this frustrates me a lot because Hey guys, we're in 2024. Everyone uses internet and the communication, and being able to communicate and being able to call someone and being able to um, to be with the outside world um, um, become vital, very, very vital, especially during the conflict zones. And it's very alarming that in 2024 as well, um, an occupation or an entity can simply turn off. Uh, the whole communication and internet access um, on two million and a half people. This is crazy that someone has this kind of powerful weapon and powerful powerful tool to just keep killing people in silence and uh, keep them disconnected and not being even able to share what's happening to them. You know, it's... Also, you know, you're a journalist, um, and this conflict has been, I think, the most lethal. I conf I'm sorry, I should say this genocide. I don't know why I even use the word conflict. It's, I don't know if genocide really describes what's happening in Gaza. It might not be strong enough. But this horror show, this nightmare, has been the most lethal for journalists possibly ever. I mean, I don't know. You can correct me if I'm wrong on that, Eugene, but I think I saw someone saying more journalists have been killed in Gaza than died in World War II. And I mean, die, yes. dying isn't even the right word because th it does seem they're being actively targeted, them and their families. There was a journalist just yesterday from Al Jazeera Arabic who had to report his entire family was killed. And that isn't the first time yes. that's happened. So I'm just curious your thoughts as a journalist witnessing this happening. I imagine a lot of the people that you're helping out, you mentioned a few of them in terms of getting them connected with eSIMs are journalists and they're doing that work while they and their families are being hunted. I think targeting journalists in this genocide is being intentional because um, this uh, genocide or, or war, exact, this specific war is so different than the other wars and the past wars. Uh, we have the social media weapon, which is being um, used in a very strong way to share the truth on what's happening on ground in Gaza. And I don't think social media has played uh, this uh, huge and important role in conflicts before. So I think the Israelis are, were terrified from sharing all what's happening and from sharing the truth through the journalists and um, definitely blocking and uh, cutting off the communication internet access was um, a powerful weapon so they can uh, they can avoid the journalists and uh, they can prevent the journalists from sharing the truth with the, so, with the social media and the media platforms as well. Um, so I think it was intentional. I think 
81 journalists so far have been killed in Gaza since the start of the genocide. This is not normal. And this is, as this is definitely not, uh, like, uh, unintentional to kill 81% of press members. Um, even today we had like a, a very heartbreaking scene from uh, North Gaza. Uh, one of the journalists was uh, among the people and civilians who were arrested and um, um, arrested in North Gaza. And I don't know, they took them and they somewhere, I don't know, we don't even know if they're being executed, if they're being um, arrested. We have no idea what's, the, where are they now? But seeing the, the horrific scenes from North Gaza today, and among these people, there are journalists who the Israeli um, say these are people from Hamas. I don't think journalists are being with Hamas. No, it's unbelievable scenes. People, you know, stripped down, who knows, being taken yes. away in trucks. I mean, you know, some of the scariest things that I think, you know, you can see. And I, I agree with you. It seems dubious uh, that it's anyone but just average people. But that's this battle for information and why, of course, they want to stop people from getting it out. So it leads me to perhaps what maybe is the most important question here, which is for those watching around the world, what can they do to help the efforts of connecting Gaza? Uh, we're still receiving uh, thousands of isms every day. We keep we, we are connecting thousands of people every day as well. Um, we will keep connecting Gaza uh, until this this genocide ends. Um, if if anyone wants to help, he, they can purchase an uh, an isim from any of the providers and send the QR code on our official email Gaza isims@gmail.com and we will provide. Is um, him to to someone in Gaza. Mm -hmm. Well, we will be happy to try to get that information out more. Murner El Halbali, writer, journalist, and founder of Connecting Gaza. We really, really, really appreciate you giving us some of your time here in the Freedom Side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.